I'm Coach Watts at uh, Frisco Reedy. Um, we talk to you about high jump. I have uh, Bree over here. Come here. Uh, she's going to be our, our demonstrator. She is not typically a high jumper, but we're going to create her into a high jumper and make her into one today. So thank you, Bree, for coming, being out here. Thank you. All right. So uh, for high jump and at the at the middle school level, 90% of the jump is the approach, and that's one of the things that uh, as a, a middle school coach you want to help them get down as as much as possible and, and be consistent in that approach uh, so then the the actual takeoff and the flight part uh, comes from uh, that approach and, and it all kind of pieces together and as they develop as a jumper the other two will follow in so we have um, uh, you will have a handout that's available as well uh, typically uh, a, a approach is 8 to 12 strides I like to make it uh, as even as possible so then they start with the leg that they're going to jump off of and, and that it's even in the, the straight the curve. Uh, ten step approaches are my favorite because you can break it down in, in five and five for uh, the, the phases or, or six and four depending on the jumper. Uh, and I'll talk more about how, what that looks like in, in, uh, in a second. Uh, typically in high jump you do a J approach. So you start uh, with the, the straight and then coming into that curve for the takeoff and making a J. And that can either be on the left side or the right side just depending on their takeoff leg. And if you ask a middle schooler what their takeoff leg is, they're probably going to be like, uh, whatever hand they're dominant with. They're going to be like, right. And it's, it's generally the opposite. So um, if like I'm, I'm right-handed. Are you right-handed? Yes. We both have left foot jump legs. Um, and that's just the, 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 like that's where we plant the most to either kick a soccer ball, we plant that left, we kick with our right. Um, and that's just the, the rule of thumb that I use. It doesn't mean that there's like some t scientific evidence on that. That's just the general rule. Uh, there's some people that just feel more comfortable coming from the other side. Uh, and But for the most part, the middle school level, if they're right-handed, they come from the right side and they jump off their left. If they're left-handed, they come from the left side and they jump off their right. Right. Um, whenever uh, they do that takeoff, they are going to, if I'm coming in from the right side and um, the right side, I'm going to make that J, I'm going to jump off that, that left and the, my right knee is going to be what's driving in and that's the closest to the mat and we'll get uh, again to that in a second and I'm going to back up and talk about uh, the approach. So I said that 90% of the approach or 90% of high jump is the approach and so we're going to break it into to three little parts. Uh, the first three steps um, and then you have steps with four to seven and then the last one's going in uh, from you know seven to nine or eight to nine there. Um, the first five steps or six steps are going to be on the straight uh, and the, the first three you to be your big power steps uh, doesn't mean that to come out like they're they're coming out of the blocks of the 100 uh, they're just a big power really getting big amplitude movements uh, on those first three and they go more into that uh, the, the speed mechanics and for the next three and then starts leaning into the curve uh, and they get a little bit quicker the idea when it comes to getting into that curve you want to build momentum into the, the that J and into that curve uh, as much as you can if you slow down and put on the brakes the flight part into the high jump uh, is more difficult uh, they, they slow down they they either land on the bar or hit on the way up uh, they, they either land really near the front of the the high jump um, they, they will take off either too soon or too early um, so whenever they take off if you have that momentum you want them to be about an arm's length away from when they did the takeoff that's just a, a good middle school kind of uh, coaching cue like this is the ideal you're going to be if you're coming in from the right side close to the, the right hand standard uh, whenever you you take off um, if you're you don't want them running straight to it and coming off in the middle if they do they're more likely to hit this standard or, or land in this area this happens a lot at the middle school uh, so you're, you're coming. I'm going to talk mostly on the right hand side because me, because uh, Bree here will be do, showing demonstrations on the right hand side. Um, first, I, I, I do want to show you guys how to to de determine that approach. We decided that you've already picked out which side they're going to be on. They're either going to be on the right, the, the left hand coming this way, or the right hand side coming this way. Uh, so from there, you need to measure out what, what's the proper distance from the standards out and, and how. How far back should they go? We know it's you know eight to twelve strides, but. Uh, 
you know, what, like what's the actual measurement out there. So uh, I'm going to have Bree come here. Um, you, so at track meets, you, you do want a measuring tape or at practice so you can kind of help measure it out. Um, so we measure the distance out from the inside of the standard. So come here. I'll ask her to place that down um, right at the inside, the standard up here. And then I'm going to go out, um, depending on how great, how good the jumper is, um, we have jumpers from all different um, ranges, newbies who have never done it, uh, and people who are uh, competing at the state level, uh, which is, you know, for girls, you're looking at 5'6", and, and boys, you know, giving up being higher than that, like getting the 6'6". Six, six. So the better the jumper, the, the, the out, more out you want to get, uh, the newer the jumper, the, the more in. It's just going to create a tighter curve, giving them a little bit more of that, um, uh, what is it, that horizontal forces to carry into uh, that mat there. So I usually, from there, measure out three different marks, uh, 10, 12, and 15. Most of my girl jumpers are at 12. Um, if I, if for middle school, I would probably put them at, uh, at 10. Um, for most of them, or in my boys, I would probably put at 12. Um, and you would have to probably just get used to them as they progress as uh, high jumpers and, and then they get more experienced and more comfortable or the bar gets higher, you will have to make those adjustments. Um, just so they don't get underneath the bar too much. Uh, so the better the jumper, the kind of more out uh, out this way and back they go, and, and vice versa, more in uh, they go. Um, so from here, I usually have another person hold it, this part down, and I go out that way. So I'm just gonna have Bree come over here, and uh, usually I have them, them hold on to where the, the 12 is. That's where I measure it from, because it's right there in the middle. And I will back up way too much, but I'll just go ahead and do it. You want to make it as straight as possible. So um, for those uh, kids who, who uh, believe that you'll never use actual math in the real life, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Me and Bree used it earlier. Uh, this needs to be a 90 degree angle and we make a little triangle here so and we do the Pythagorean theorem. You don't have to do it. 12, if this is 12, this needs to be 15 and that's what I, I use right here. Or you can um, do the math just right there. We can do three, four, five. Um, this is where they, you ideally want them to start their curve. Um, I wouldn't put too much of a, like a, a mark here because the kids will get to where they have to land right on it to get to the curve. And, and we know middle school schoolers are usually exact people. If you say, use your arms, they get really big. Or we say, slow down, they stop uh, instead of just easily doing it. Um, but I do a small little tape there just for like a coaching mark for me. Um, so I can see them as they come into their approach, I can see where their, their curve is starting. And that's mostly for me, not for them. Um, the big mark that I use for them is here. So I might make this mark bigger because you want them to run straight from their, their, their mark back there to you as, until they get to that curve. Um, a lot of kids want to run straight and then either step out to go in and they make more of like a, a sad L. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but it's that L uh, approach instead of a, a curved J. Um, and so that, that, that's the like target I have for them. And this is my coaching mark. And then from here, just practice trying to get where they're going to start. So for um, Bree, I asked her to, I moved it all the way back here. And this is just a general mark. So that's at 15. And so this one is a little bit more out about like 45 so we went 12 and I moved it out there so what's that at 27 yeah, 27 and then this is at 62 uh, and this is just a general idea uh, and I asked her to run straight um, and I count her strides so I was like Marie go ahead and uh, start you'll have your left foot four that's your jump leg and just 10 strides straight one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. And so I just have her do that a few times so I can get an idea where her fifth or sixth steps are and I can kind of adjust where her curve is going to be. Um, if, or if I want her, if I do want that five, five, 
um, approach, then I'll move her up. I'll say, take a step forward uh, or stride length forward. Um, and then I'll tell her do it again. And big thing uh, on coaching high jump, don't tell them what you're looking for because they will decide to focus on it. And so I told her what I was looking for and I had to tell her multiple times, stop, th let me think. And, and you just run, and you just run your strides. Uh, and that, that is one of the big things that happens a lot. If you're like, hey, I, uh, I'm looking for your 10th steps. They're, going, they're trying to count instead of you. Um, it, so big thing, so go, go ahead and go through it again, Brie. So her fifth and sixth are a little bit more up than um, I would like. I would like her fifth step to be a little maybe here, or maybe I need to take her in. She's a new high jumper, so I might ask her to take a step forward and go out a little bit or in a little bit to to do it. And we'll just we'll practice that approach uh, and mostly try to figure out that part. Um, a whole practice we'll do that we won't even actually jump because uh, again like I said the, the biggest part about high jump is finding the right spot there um, and, and the, depending on again your jumper is where they, they mark and whenever I find a spot I usually kind of I mark it I don't let them get caught up on it because I don't want them getting too technical then you'll have jumpers who have to do certain things where they have to rock back real big like, and like do like three taps and walk rock back and do some more taps and uh, do a little, uh, so I try to I try to keep away and eliminate that as much as possible and I just say stay stay true to the jump stay true to, to your ability and, and just don't think I just need you to get out there and, and do your, your approach and and let the, let the technical part be on my side. Um. Right, a little bit more on the curve. So uh, go ahead and come here, uh, Bree. Um, so let, let, let's, we're gonna say that her fifth step is, general, is about right here. Um, the, 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 the idea on that curve, you, you really want to get uh, in that leaning uh, motion. So like, just like you would run the curve on a track, you lean into that curve a little bit more. We want to uh, really create those centrifugal forces that will help you, you know, get into that mat and make that, uh, that kind of rotation into it. So we have this, uh, the, the, the horizontal you know, forces and then we're, now we're going to get into the curve. So. Um, just go ahead and, and run the uh, U, but focus on that the, the, the curve. Good, so sometimes we'll do um, just U-shape runs. So I'll either have them way back there and I'll let them run all the way through creating a big U, some small U's, and just really just they're running, uh, getting used to the curve. Um, we also have circle runs um, <laughs> uh, that you can do there. And I'll talk about drills here in a second. But what I want you to do, go ahead and take a few steps in, like right over there and act like you're leaning in like freeze frame. Okay, so we're, what we're looking at, uh, take another straight up, okay, is for this to be a straight line. Uh, and so from her foot there, uh, and lean in as much as you can without falling. Hey, lean into me. Okay. Uh, so that we want that to create this lean here. Um, a lot of kids, if you say, uh, say lean into the curve, they try to like do it at like their hips and not really uh, lean for like making it a straight lean. So we always say like push the the ground out. So like push out on that circle there, uh, push off the curve is what I, I say. So then they, they get the feel for being flat and really pushing with their feet out. And that will allow them to get into that, um, that lean a little bit more. Um, Common mistakes that happen in the curve with new jumpers is they slow down uh, going in because they're trying to they're looking at that bar and they're thinking, oh my gosh, that's that's really high or I'm not going to make it or they get too caught up um, on that. But what you want to do is kind of really accelerate into the curve. This should all get you know get a little bit quick in here, and we'll talk about the, the last couple steps uh, in a second. But like you, you want to continue that momentum. You don't want to put on the brakes from the but you you've got these big empty movements and you're really getting that power going creating those forces to come come here and a lot of them slow down it's a very common mistake so keeping a, 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 a um, either the, 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 an equal speed or a building speed into that curve is what you're looking for so then um, we get here we can uh, we can come out from the mat and not from under it and it's going to take us all the way in to it uh, let's see what we're getting to um, when when it comes to running the curve they need to 
get used to running in a straight line so one foot is in front of the other because they're running that curve super tight um, they need to get used to this. I do a lot of drills focusing on that uh, I usually have chalk uh, that will ha I have out and so they can see the line and they practice running on that line instead of um, generally running you know we have a foot mark that's a little bit more to the left and a little bit to the right of course um, a typical uh, I talked about how I like the 5-5 five five approach and, and the reason why is because whenever it comes into that that fourth step and going into their fifth that fifth step is already kind of to more to that left so then their six steps they can come here and they, they can try to avoid that that step out on that fifth step a lot of kids want to you know run and, and step out and, and to make the, to be really aggressive with that curve uh, you have a lot of long triple jumpers who like to you know do a, a side thing and, and you got to really reinforce running in that straight line creating that J running that curve pushing out on that curve and, and leaning in uh, tight and uh, being explosive on that those last couple steps there and those last couple steps um, they are going to be slightly out from the hips you usually you say you want to keep your that foot strike underneath your hips but that last uh, like the penultimate step is going to be a little bit further out which is causes the, uh, uh, us to drop our hips a little bit to get into that power stance and then that last step we're going to point our toe towards the standard that's out, out here so if this is my takeoff spot it, uh, my, my foot is out a little bit more of my hips there and my toes point to that standard so whenever I go I, I'm not you usually kind of gravitate to where that toe is pointed so if we're like here we're trying to get we're forcing that back flip we're not going to get anywhere we almost put on the brakes trying to do that that twist so you're having that toe point that standard and it really get up uh, into there um, allows us to do that so the, the last couple steps are a little bit quicker we always talk about a little uh, a rhythm like is the last two steps to be Real, real quick and um, it, so you're building up that speed so you're going in and it's going to be the uh, there instead of like a long slow dragged out one uh, you're losing momentum with that um, so that, that's basically uh, the the, uh, the approach there and a little bit of the takeoff uh, um, get it, just being consistent with it and uh, w you know with uh, either a 10 stride or you can do the six uh, not six of uh, the the 12 strides um, it'll bring them in a little bit for a uh, 10 is just just an easy number for me and, and easy for, easier for the kids to to understand uh, basically your, your 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 approach broke it uh, kind of uh, broke down in, into little pieces there um, and, and I hope that all made sense because when it gets to the, the actual takeoff um, so like I'm coming from the right side so my left side is my my takeoff um, the, the you you want to drive the right knee up and whenever it comes to where they're looking at if they're looking at the bar they're gonna hit the bar the idea whenever they're coming up and then driving that uh, leg up um, they'll have their arms come swing through is to look at the back corner and that will help them kind of create the, the flight in that arch it gets back um, and so they they don't get into a cannonball uh, a stay, uh, a phase. A lot of the newbies want to come in and just cannonball like they're getting into a pool and it's summertime, which would be nice right about now. Uh, but uh, so the, you want them to travel up before they go in. That's a coaching cue that I say like, give yourself, be patient in the flight where give yourself time to, to actually travel up before you start forcing yourself into it. Um, a lot of them like want to like hit the bar, uh, they want to get really close to the mat to jump and they just you gotta get them comfortable coming off a little bit more uh, you do some practice jumps we do scissor jumps and uh, we will demonstrate that here in a second um, let's see key is to travel up more so um, I'm gonna just talk about uh, before we get into some drills and um, oh I have over the bar um, my over the bar coaching cues I say hips to the sky uh, that will help them create uh, this kind of motion if you just like hey hips to the sky they're like what you know we're talking about whenever they're in this air this up in this area force your hips up and, and look back there uh, to the back corner helps create that arch if you say create an arch they probably won't even know what you're talking about so uh, um, or you know belly button up to the sky or whatever you, uh, however you want to say it and the the, uh, the flight over the bar shouldn't look really like violent or like, aggressive you want them to be smooth and flow you want them to um, 
whenever they're up is to kind of go back hips to the sky and whenever you like you want them to do a kicking part of it and that kick you don't want them to kick from the hips or extend from the hips because what happens is they drop their hips so then that looks more like where they're going up and then they drop to to kick their legs so their bar or their legs don't hit that bar and drag it off so we say extend from the knees and not from the hips we don't actually don't even mention hip, uh, hips to the sky and extend from the knees if you say extend from the hips they start doing it because they want to feel what it feels like so uh, whenever they're up I'm like, great hips to the sky and um, if they do it I, I try to reinforce like hey that's exactly what I wanted this next time let's um, let's add on extending from the knees so you know like what does that look like and so they're up in this position and they just extend out and our back flops that we do um, will help create the the, the uh, time of the bar and now again we'll go through some some drills so you can see what that looks like all right so I, I We'll, we'll continue on talking about that with the drills, but uh, I do want to talk some about the meat logistics. We all have to host our meats. Uh, when it comes to high jump, uh, there, y whenever you host, there's just usually starting high that's agreed upon against, uh, amongst the coaches there. Um, you, uh, you get three attempts at each height. Um, and so if, if it's all at, uh, if, say, 4-2, uh, that one kid gets uh, three attempts. If they uh, clear it in the three, they get to move on to the next height. And that you usually move up the height two inches for each uh, each time. Uh, if it gets to a jump off, I don't I imagine middle schoolers coming up to a jump off. But if it does, uh, and it's getting up a little bit higher, you might decide to go up by one inch. Um, the place is determined by uh, attempts. So somebody who is, who's cleared their height on the first attempt every time um, is going to be placed higher than someone who maybe clears it on their second or third one. Uh, so uh, uh, you want to get your jump in and clear it as uh, on the first attempt as many times as possible. Uh, so if we're, when it comes to that placing. Uh, whenever you are the person running off high jump, uh, high school, not high school, uh, middle school tends to have a lot of kids, um, and so you're in, it's not like um, long and triple where you can do flights or you know throws where you can do flights of people. Otherwise, you'll have to let each flight you have to change that height and that bar. So it's very similar to pole vault and how you do it. And there's this um, way uh, of doing it. It's called five alive. So you always have five jumpers um, going at a time. So if um, the first person goes uh, they miss well they just go back in line behind that fifth person that's going to go instead of waiting for the, the 30th jumper to get this one attempt in and the second person clears uh, then uh, they pull up a fifth person to come in so there's always five people moving and at that height and you, you, you'll go through it um, until you get everybody cleared or you know crossed out for that height um, that's just some uh, meat logistics there. Uh, so for those who have to host this this spring, uh, you have a little bit of knowledge on that. Yes, All right. Yes. Question. What type of athlete, uh, body size or speed or what exactly, if I'm looking through a group of middle schoolers to try to identify those that could be a potential so a high jumper? jumper. Um, <laughs> Ideally, you, you want somebody a little bit taller uh, because their hips are a little bit higher. It uh, doesn't mean that uh, tall people are always great high jumpers. Usually, they're better triple jumpers. Um, but you, you generally want to find somebody who um, has that uh, just... I, I don't know. We, we've had high jumpers from all different uh, heights, but maybe... Um, uh, somebody that that can adapt easily that that's uh, that's uh, can um, has proper speed mechanics or that learns or they're quick on their feet uh, some of the I was telling Bree earlier that some of it you had to learn how to adapt to like the wind and the little factors that happen so you, you want somebody the body type if I'm if I'm observing oh they'll probably be a good high jumper um, somebody who can do uh, bounds or who uh, is a little bit more springy and like the the plyometrics that you're doing um, that doesn't always mean it has to be height uh, but again generally if their hips are up higher than the less travel that have to come up um, I, I wouldn't at the middle school level. I wouldn't count out anybody. Just uh, but mostly those people who can jump off of one foot, 
because a lot of people uh, jumpers want to go off a two uh, and somebody who uh, uh, who is not afraid to learn new things that, that's the biggest thing I, that me I got um, I, I come from a, a place where track and field is something that you had to like pull teeth to get kids out so um, we really took high jumpers in whatever form or fashion they came in um, and uh, we had you know again as a middle school coach you really don't have the time to really teach like as you don't just, you really just don't have the time so you're just trying to find those kids um, generally uh, pole vaulters and high jumpers are, are good long jumpers and high jumpers complement each other um, hurdlers if they're a hurdler I use or cheer um, volleyball players are good volleyball players like to jump off of two feet though um, basketball players because they're used to that layup type of uh, drill um, big multiple sport athlete stuff uh, soccer players tend to just be more like of a well-rounded uh, athlete they have the endurance so they can jump a lot and, and have that stamina uh, to hold that. Um, so that if you're looking for a specific sport, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, it can be a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's part okay. Multi-sports, yeah. yeah. kind of helps. Okay, I hope it yeah, answered, yeah. Perfect. Okay. okay. Um, so let's uh, show you some drills uh, so then uh, we can, uh, you know, let you have your, your time. So uh, first, w whenever it comes to warm-ups, I like to warm up with uh, back flops um, and um, actually a, a few different things. So like I'll have them like, hey, warm up, do your, you know, A skip, high knees and all that stuff. And then we'll get into doing uh, back, uh, back flops. They can be two different things. Uh, some of my experienced high jumpers love doing actual backflips where they they go into a backflip and they land on their stomach uh, so and set but if you're your middle schoolers are probably not going to do that they might try it don't encourage it um, but backflop is really just um, you're, you're coming over and you're approaching the mat and you're coming off of two feet but this is what we're talking about whenever your your travel time over the ball you're really focused on getting those hips to the sky and extending from the knees uh, and you're just trying to practice that that flight over the bar uh, so go ahead and bring and practice Good. So again, just hips to the sky. And I usually have them get in um, like three sets of ten. Probably not even that much. Probably. Good. Nice. Good warm up. Good. Travel up and hips to the sky. Good. Good. Remember um, what we talked about getting that head back, look at, back a little bit more. Good. Good. So that was a lot better. There you go. Good. So we go through that a few times. Um, can you do a back bend? Yeah. Okay. So oh, another one, actually, she doesn't know what I'm, we're about to do, but I'm going to ask her to do it anyways. So go ahead and get on the mat. And if your kids can do this, then, then this is great uh, warm up for them, as, uh, for them to get into a back bend. Um, most of the girls can do this pretty easy. And then just let go uh, and flop down. That's it, but you just kick up. So you just kick up your legs. That, that's it. And so I just had them go through that maybe you know five or six times, um, just to kind of warm up that arch part. This is what it look, my, we want it to ideally look like whenever they go over the bar into this this arch position. Now this uh, they it does kind of reinforce some things that we necessarily don't like but it's just a good warm-up it gets them a good stretch and they get to kind of play around that my kids generally have a good a good time with that yes. um, it's all fine yeah. so like, uh, the big thing is to make this fun as possible for them on that uh, and then the high jump and, and just uh, reinforce those little things that you're looking for so I asked like I was looking for her hips up great good job that's exactly what I was looking for and then I wanted her to look back a little bit more she does it great that's exactly what I wanted you to do uh, that's really big when it comes to dealing with those middle school kids they need that positive reinforcement not like a uh, hips up but you didn't look back you know and then they look back but now your hips are dropping so try to like flip flop it your way you, uh, you say things because uh, they do take that really personal especially at that, that middle school level all right so next we're going to do some circle runs so we might need to switch places here um, so the circle run um, is going to be really focusing on uh, the, the, just the curve of the approach and we're going to um, focus on running um, one foot in front of the other. So this is what I was talking about. I usually have a, a chalk circle so they can see the line, but I didn't have chalk so I used cones, which is just, just as fine. You can tell them run either just outside of the cones or right in the inside uh, depending on uh, you know, your kid and if they're like stepping on the cones, I would say move inside. If they're not, then they're fine. 
So go ahead and um, what you want to talk about is in high jump, those last couple steps, you have to get kind of flat on your feet. Uh, we have a lot of people who want to run with tippy toes and what you, uh, it, you know, okay but it, it, you know when it gets to high jump they're gonna have to get flat and then triple jump and then long jump anytime you, you want you're gonna have to get kind of flat on that foot so for this I, I really talk about running flat and the first drill that we do we do a heel toe rock so it's gonna be um, more of a, just like a skip just where we can get warmed up so we go ahead and start doing that just a heel toe rock this is just a nice little warm-up to begin to get started and then I'll say pick it up a little bit Good. So as she goes in circles, she's going to do uh, two circles at once so she doesn't get too dizzy uh, or too bored. So pick it up a little bit more. Now just get a little bit more spring into it. Now come off the garden there. So now she's really walking back heel toe, heel toe, and really powering up a little bit more. Good. So uh, good. You can stop. Um, that, that's just one of the warm-ups that we do. Um, another way you can um, do this is um, running just a circle. So you're going to run with high knees. Again, focus on running with one foot uh, in between each other and you're gonna run flat. Good, so her knees are out in front, that's what we want. Really lean into that curve. Good, hug it a little bit tighter. Good, knees out in front, good, good, good. Get a little bit flatter, you get up on your toes. Good, good, and stop. Also, if I do any more circles, I'll get dizzy uh, doing that. So I usually just generally do two uh, circles each drill. Uh, now um, I'm going to ask her to come from a straight and then do two circles. Uh, so just go over there where that tape is um, and run, just run straight into the curve and then do a lap. Good, good. Hug it, hug it tight, hug it tight, hug it tight. Nice. Um, and. You don't have to do it that fast, but thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, when they first start, just tell them to nice, nice and easy. Um, and then maybe the second one, okay, now turn it up a little bit faster. And then the third time, like, all right, then let's get up and go a little bit. Um, now, uh, we're going to do that again, but I want you, listen, Bree, whenever we go through, uh, you're going to complete the circle, and then uh, whenever you get into this general area, what I want you to do is to pop up like it would be a high jump. You know what I mean? So whenever you come over here, you're going to run straight, run a circle, and then right, whenever you get here, remember you, you jump off your left, you're just going to come up, okay? So we're going to do a straight, a circle with a, a little pop-up. Good, good, easy. Running into the curve there, knees up, running flat, hug that curve. Just whenever you're ready, pop up. Good, good. I want those last few steps to be a little bit quicker. Okay. Same. And then we just go ahead and do it again. You can recover as you walk, you don't have to run. Um, yeah, so she did great. I would, you know, uh, just tell her to hug the, the curve a little bit more and get a little bit flatter. She she's our uh, our one two sprinter, so she's not used to getting that that flat um, on our feet all the time. We we do encourage them to run on the balls of their feet, uh, but she's doing a great job. So uh, go ahead and, and do it one more time for me. Good, 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 nice. All right, now start building it up. Good. And just whenever you're ready. Good. You were thinking way too much. So I want you to just go off a of fill. So if it, whenever you're running that circle and, and you're coming here and you know that I generally want you to pop up, I don't. There's no exact moment. There's no right foot. Just like, all right, I'm gonna go in that general area. Okay. okay. So get that that penultimate step right underneath you. There you go. Okay, and, and, and on, on this approach, uh, she doesn't necessarily get, have to get flat here. The flat part really comes into the curve, not in the last few steps, not so much the whole time. And the circle runs, I just encourage the flat foot just so we can get away from the, the tippy toe runs. She's not somebody who does that very often, so I know I keep telling her to get flat, but it's mostly just the curve. And, and this part right here, you want your, your basic sprint mechanics, just like you want any, any jumper, uh, those basic running form. And, and sprint mechanics are very important for any jump, pole vault, triple jump, long jump, and it's good for them all, uh, and we, we still encourage it here. So again, just do your normal run through here. Good, nice. Now let's hug that curve. Now get a little bit flat. Really push out on that curve, lean in. Good, good, just whenever you're ready. There you go. 
So the last few couple steps, you just want to encourage them to speed up into those last few steps. That's what I'm trying to get her to do and to focus on. So the last three, you know, two or three steps, they're, they're quick turnover and pop up really high. All right. Um, I, that's, that's a general idea of some drills there um, and, and just repetition. One thing, I, I do not encourage jumpers jumping every day. There's other things they can do uh, that are important in strength and mobility. Um, they, sprint mechanics and basic bounding and plyos are way more important than, than jumping every day. Um, those who are long, triple, and high jumpers, uh, which is far and few in between, but if, those, if they do all three jumps, alternate that and give them recovery days so then they, they, they don't get overworked at a young age know that those middle schoolers they're developing as as, uh, as people and athletes and so their their bones and muscles are a little bit more sensitive than maybe a collegiate athlete who can jump every day and they don't even jump every day so uh, just really uh, re-emphasize some of those the speed mechanics and, and just basic strength and general strength stuff uh, is way more important uh, and these drills are good like we can do have a non-jumping day and just do back flops and um, back bend you know whatever you want to call that circle runs and and run throughs where we we don't really jump. Um, I'm not a big person on uh, on doing the, the run through and popping up too much because um, it kind of that's that, that pounding we don't necessarily like. Uh, one more thing I am going to show is this uh, your scissor jumps. I do this at meets to warm up too. Um, we do short approach scissor jumps. I don't really go on a full approach unless they're just trying to find their mark, um, and, and that's just a, kind of a. a, a a scissor approach. She's going to demonstrate. She's coming just from the beginning of a curve, um, not uh, uh, getting a big running start, but just kind of warming up. There you go. Good. Good. Do it one more time, and then we'll come like, and try to do a, a full one. Easy peasy. All right, so now um, she doesn't have a mark. Again, she came out here and, uh, and, and volunteered her time to, uh, for this video. Uh, so I'm just gonna, we're kind of just gonna eyeball uh, an area. And she, she's a great athlete. So um, let's see, she's come up just a little bit. Good, right there. Yeah, she's a scissor kick. Good, good, that's all I needed. So now I want you to accelerate into that curve. All right, I have a quick question. Yes. So if during meets, when you when you tape your mark, are you taping kind of the, the, the width as well as the depth or just you line up your depth kind of about where you want to be to approach like you use that for your coaching mark yes for them whenever I get their stride so like we had them run through um, like 10 steps 10 strides when I ever get this right they will tell me like okay so their fifth step is right here and I want I want it to be here so that's how much I'm gonna move them up and, and then I'll move them up like I asked so her go ahead and, and uh, run through again one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So like her, her fifth, sixth step are, are up here. So I asked her to step, take a step forward so then she can get uh, the 10 strides in that area. And, and then I would probably, whenever I found it, and it was, she's really consistent and hitting that 10th step, or that's the stride I'm looking for. If you're looking for eight, then that, the eighth step, whatever, I, I get it where she's taking off from, I'll mark it. And then I'll, whenever it comes to a meet, she'll say, I'll say, hey, you're, you're you know, 10 out and 60 back. And and then she'll have that mark every time. Um, and with, uh, in a, so like for this video, it, it's very just like guesstimation. Uh, and she's kind of just adapting to it. Um, but in a real situation, I, I have the exact mark and I usually I, uh, it, like have it down for them. And so then all I have to do is show up and their name is there. And that's, I try to take out that whole thinking for them out of the picture. But yeah, I have it marked. Did I answer it? Yeah. Okay. Here. Okay, so um, let's go through a scissor approach. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. 
Okay. So she she's getting used to it. She's coming off, uh, uh, jumping in, uh, to the mat a little bit closer than I would like, but uh, but she is uh, like some of your kids learning how to get comfortable with just that part, and she's just getting comfortable with that approach. And as as they ex get more experience uh, and the more powerful they get, maybe that's whenever you need to uh, uh, back them up a little bit more uh, and, and scoot them out. Uh, but if, as early jumpers, I would have them in a little bit and and, and not ten feet out I would have them eight feet out um, and then getting used to that really just working on leaning into that curve and staying tall but see that was fun yeah.